openness. So open means many things. Uh, uh, open, you're from the open university, so open can mean, or, or MOOCs, open can mean open enrollment, right? That you break down the barrier of who, who, who can take or can't take a class, right? Uh, an entirely different kind of open is around open source and, and open to innovate on, right? To share the intellectual, pro that's more an intellectual property thing, right? The ability to, to share in the, in the intellectual sort of enterprise. Uh, and then I think, much like in the open source movement, there's also a, there's a lot of confusion around the word open, and also a lot of people, when things are free, they conflate that with open, right? Uh, and so I think uh, open, I think the short answer is that open means many different things to many different people, and that's not necessarily a good thing. In fact, the... Uh, uh, open source software uh, movement had a major sort of summit about this in the late 1990s, early 2000s around defining what it means even to be open source. And there's, there's really two factions, right? One focused around Eric Raymond and Linus Torvalds and the, uh, all of that Linux world and then around Richard Stallman and they still don't agree so I, th I don't think we'll ever necessarily agree when it comes to openness for education either. From our perspective at Open Sachs College, right, um, the, what, the Open Sachs College, the word open is in Open Sachs College, right, it's the first word of the three. Uh, and our books are all open, right, they're, they're open license, Creative Commons license, they're uh, they have all the virtues of an uh, open curriculum, right? But when we talk to faculty about the books, right, and it's the faculty who we are really marketing the books to because they make the decisions, right, on whether to use the book, we found that, that leading with open was a very, didn't work because they didn't understand it, right, or they didn't care because to them the problem for the those particular for a lot many of those particular fa faculty, I'd say the largest percentage of them, they care about the free aspect of the books and the fact that they will stay free, right? And of course, open guarantees that, right? That they're free now and they will stay free because they're open licensed. But I think open is so nuanced and confusing that uh, we have just decided that that we always lead with free textbooks because the real crisis that these faculty are trying to solve is the price of textbooks are too high, right? And then once they, once they either buy into it or they ask questions about, well, what if I want to be able to customize the book? Well, then we dive in and say, well, by the way, the book isn't just free. It's also open source licensed. So if you want to change chapters, you can. If you want to edit the book, you can. But I think um, open is, uh, is one of those things like green Right, that everybody thinks everybody should un everybody thinks people understand, and yet it's actually quite nuanced and is quite uh, often confused by people in the press or people in the public. And this is precisely the debate around that that happened around software in the late 1990s, early 2000s. Was Richard Stallman wanted to call it free software, but free as in the French word uh, libre, right? Which and they would always talk about free as in freedom, not as in beer, right? Are you familiar with this debate? You should go. It's it's fa fascinating, right? So uh, the idea is free is in liberty, right? The fact to them the fact that it was free as in beer was less important, right? As in free beer, but uh, for the faculty that that we're trying to get to adopt the book so that we can stave off this crisis of, of uh, uh, you know, one trillion dollars of student debt just in the United States, it's the free aspect as in free like beer that really sort of matters to those adopters. That's a big word, open. <laughs> I guess in the educational, then that's actually bigger than I would think about normally. So if we think about open in education, that brings in everything you can think about with academic freedom. Right? You want open discussion in your classroom. You want to be able to um, 
communicate and to instruct on a wide diversity of issues without lots of controls on it. So that's the open is really a big word. Um, I think when I think about course materials and open educational resources, I think what I'm thinking there is that it does embody that freedom. Um, it takes some time, and I think that's the thing where I, where I think the maturity of the open educational resources is really going to be positive. With um, open stacks, you now have the option of adopting a textbook that's just like the textbook you would have adopted from a publisher. So there's not a cost for adopting those. And so I think when, we th when I think about open, it's a huge word. It means a lot, especially when we think about academics. When I think about it as far as the resources, I think what we're doing there is solving one of the potential problems in higher education, at least in the U.S., which is cost to students. But we're also then giving even more academic freedom to the faculty. It is the key question on which a lot of our work hinges right now. I mean, we're asking people to edit the OER article on Wikipedia, um, and no one has really been able to define OER. It's a great challenge. People are afraid to tackle it. And I think it revolves very much around that question, what is open? Um, and it has so many different meanings. And I know that's not a great answer, but it could mean open in terms of the license. It could mean open in terms of um, various other things. You know, different organizations have sought to define it, and, and um, for many, the ability to use a piece of data and then adapt it and reuse it is what makes it open. I mean, to me, I don't know exactly what it means right now. Um, I, think, I think that there is soul searching involved for me that I'm still doing actively. So open means a lot of different things to a lot of different people. Uh, most of the time, uh, people equate open with free. Uh, but free and open aren't necessarily the same thing. And so I don't subscribe that free is the same as open. Uh, my mind, what open means is that uh, the end user has ability to take content uh, and they have no restrictions around that content, i.e. they are open to adapt it. They are open to share it with others. They're open to consume it. And I think that has to be the tenet of open. Uh, and uh, if free is a part of that, that's great. Uh, but it doesn't necessarily mean it has to be free. Oh, with, <laughs> as, as you know, <laughs> as we all know, that's a very loaded uh, term, open. Uh, my first encounter with it was in open source software out of computer science. And there it was quite clear because I can write a computer program in a high-level language, compile it, which converts it to machine language, and there's no way for you to take the machine language and know where it came from. It's, in, it's, it's just ones and zeros, and so it's, you cannot back out and find out what was the program originally. So open source means I want to see the source of your language before it got compiled. But then it morphed into meaning not only do I want to see it, I want to have the ability to change it. I am going to change your computer code. Well that's very threatening to the computer uh, programmer, but it's very liberating to the user. So that's a, a change that's taken place uh, over the past few decades in computer science. And now what's happening is that's moving into the educational arena to say uh, this uh, book here there's a curve or a table and it's puzzling I would like to see the data behind that this used a parameter of 0.5 I wonder what it would look like with 0.7 and that you could do that so rather than the the author controlling everything the reader the student can control part of it. Not all of it, but part of it. Uh, so that's open. It's opening into allowing the instructor and the student to do things that previously only the author could do. So uh, 
then there's mother openness like uh, how much does something cost should it be quote free and some people equate free with open and uh, the word free in English since it means no cost in, in one uh, definition but in the other it means it's free in that it can move around unconstrained and those are a little bit different uh, concepts so that uh, some people talk about free as in freedom not as in no cost the openness you know if I think about what the word means to me uh, its colloquial meaning for me is largely around transparency and the ability to access some version of truth in a way that um, could be equivalently accessed by anyone. Uh, I don't think that open necessarily means free. Uh, and the challenge with, there's two challenges with free that I've found. One of them is a more prosaic one, which is simply how do you sustain something that's free without it being a charity? Because it's really hard to sustain charities. Um, the other is a, is a more subtle thing, which is that my experience is people don't value things that are 100% free. If, if it's some tiny amount, uh, then they both place a greater value on it and and they're more demanding in a good way of themselves and of the um, rice rice was free for most of its existence uh, the first 60 years of its existence it charged nothing to attend um, and that was not a sustainable business model. So ultimately they had to start charging a little bit for tuition. We're still priced significantly below our peers. Uh, that's part of our DNA, uh, but we're nowhere near free, except for those 30 to 40% of the students who really can't afford to pay much of anything. And so for them, it remains free. Um, so I don't think it has to me to be as much about being free as being publicly and transparently equally accessible to just about everybody. Um, as you know from being here at the conference, we do an enormous amount of different things here around uh, educational resources, ranging from the OpenStax project, where we're, where we're not exactly the publisher's best friend, uh, to the um, to science materials for uh, younger learners from preschool through high school uh, through the STEM Scopes project. And STEM Scopes now reaches a million and a half plus kids just in the state of Texas and we've started making these materials broadly available in other states. Uh, it's clear we will be one of the largest providers of such materials. Um, we're not actually trying to maximize the profit out of this. Um, when I asked the founder, when we worked together to figure out how could we make these materials more broadly available, and it was clear that we could only make them most broadly available if we charged something. So we'd have the revenue to distribute them properly, to continue to make them better and better. So it's not about anybody getting rich, it's about being able to provide the best materials to the most number of people. And so I said, okay, you know, what do you want to charge? And he said, well, 399 
a very odd number, right? Uh, so I said, you know, read why that number? And he said, because it's a whole year of science for the cost of a happy meal. <laughs> Which I thought was a great pricing <laughs> strategy. <laughs> Any parent could say, you know, I'd rather my kid have a year of science than one happy meal. Uh, so, um, but that's a, that was the balance of trying to maximize accessibility and be able to ensure sustainability. Uh, we could have priced it at 20 bucks and it, at 20 bucks would have made more money but reached fewer people. And it was about reaching the maximum number of people. And I guess that's, that's part of what I imagine openness being about. Uh, if requiring that something be free means that you can't really sustain it and thereby push it out globally, then that was probably a mistake. If, if the maximum profit means that you charge $200 for a textbook and then 70% of your students can no longer afford that textbook so they don't use it at all. Maybe you made a lot of money, but that you haven't maximized the social good. And so there's something in between those that allows you to somehow provide as much good for as many people as possible. So if I, if I think about some of the open university type offerings and open university in some ways is the unsung parent of the MOOC phenomenon. Uh, but if I think about given a choice, would I rather be a student at a university like Rice or Oxford where I can sit down with a world expert over a cup of coffee and work through a challenging intellectual problem? Or would I rather watch a series of, of pre-tape uh, lectures with appropriate exercises online. No, I'd rather sit down with a cup of coffee. But that's not the choice for most people. We can only reach less than one millionth of the world's population in that cup of coffee mode. Uh, that's a pretty infinitesimal piece of the world's population to reach. So would I rather discuss programming games with Joe Warren face to face? Yes, I would. But would I rather have no access at all or have access to Joe and Scott's knowledge via the MOOC platform fully, with fully embedded software that actually enables me to create my own game? I'd rather have that than nothing. And so a lot of this is not about what's the very best that it could possibly be. It's about this versus nothing. And versus nothing, many of these OER resources seem quite extraordinary, even if they're not quite the same as being in the sun-dappled halls of Queen's College. Uh, to me, the most important aspect of openness is, uh, is, is, is that practice of using, using the internet as a tool to engage with a broader community um, and to, to, to create connections that might have been pretty difficult to surface before the internet existed. Um, so in a context like I was just describing, uh, if a student um, you know, is working on a, an article about a political figure in Egypt, uh, they might find that someone from Egypt is working on that article alongside them. And so now they're able to uh, ask questions of someone you know, around the world 
uh, who has a very different perspective on a topic. And you know, an opportunity like that might not have existed 10 or 20 years ago, or it might have taken a great deal of effort to, to create that relationship. Uh, so to me, that's, that's the most exciting aspect of openness. There are, of course, many different things that people mean by open, and I think that, you know, they're all important. So uh, the openness of the license uh, that enables something like Wikipedia to exist, where people explicitly agree that they're not going to uh, tightly control the contributions they make to a project like Wikipedia, but that their primary intention is to share. Uh, that, that's, of course, very impo important. Um, just the access issues of the more traditional open, open education movement, I think, are very important. Lowering the boundaries, the, the, lowering the barriers to people participating in education, uh, where they might have things in their life that make it difficult for them to attend school on a certain schedule or things like that. Um, but really, the, 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 the practice and the participation are the, the part that's the most interesting to me.